In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform regression using decision tree. This is our data set. It contains 10,000 customer records, their average balance, their age, whether they are entrepreneur or unemployed, whether they are married or divorced, whether they have high school or college education. And because regression problem is about predicting continuous numeric data, in this example, we're going to predict the customer's average balance using other customer information. There's also a partition column that label each of the record as either training or validation or test set. In this example, we're using 33% for each of the training, validation, and test set. This is the same data set as the one we used in KNN regression. So in the end, we can compare this regression tree model with the KNN regression model and see which one performs better. Highlight the data. Under data mining, under predict, click regression tree. Under the data tab, you will see the data range is as highlighted and first row contains headers is checked. We're going to predict average balance. So that will be the output variable. And we're going to use the other customer information variables as the independent variables or selected variables. Next, we're going to use the partition column. In here, you can also use automatic or user defined or like equal. Here, I'll just use the partition column. And for the records in the terminal notes, this is similar to the classification tree. The default value given by analytic solver depends on the total number of records, especially the ones that are in the training set. So this is about 10% of the training set. This means that the tree would stop splitting when it reaches a maximum of 334 records in the terminal notes. Similar to the classification tree, we want to prune using the validation set. And for the tree for scoring, we're going to use the best pruned. And so we want to create the model using the training set and we want to prune the decision tree to overcome overfitting problem. And overfitting problem is basically that your model matches the training set very well, however, not working well with the test set or the data in reality. So then the model doesn't turn out very useful. So we want to use the validation set and see how the model performs, right? And then we want to prune the tree to only leaves the most important features as the decision nodes. We want to show the feature importance and we want to set analytic solver suggest seven as the maximum number of levels. So the tree will start splitting whether it reaches 334 records in the terminal nodes or seven levels of the trees. In the trees to display, we want to select fully grown, best pruned, and minimum error. In my classification tree demonstration, I explain the difference among these three kinds of trees. Next, in the scoring tab, we would select the detail report as well as the summary report. And then click finish. In the training score worksheet, we can see the model performance in terms of RMSE and R square. We discussed the RMSE in the linear regression video. The smaller the RMSE, the better the model is. And preferably, we will have RMSE less or equal to 10% of the average of the predicted value. So unfortunately, our RMSE here is still pretty big. It's 3,415. And the average of the average balance is $1,801. Therefore, 10% of this is about 180. So clearly our RMSE is far, far away from that goal. But that's okay. It's only our first run without tuning up, uh, without feature selection, etc. The model can be further improved. So this is the RMSE. Uh, it shows the difference between the predictive value and the actual value. And then R square, we also discussed this in the linear regression video. The higher the R square, the more of your data set can be explained by your model. 
So we can see a very low kind of R square in here, about 2.8%. So it's not ideal either. So in the validation, we see a similar, slightly higher RMSE, and we see a slightly lower R square. And in the test set, we have about the same RMSE with the training, and then we have a 2% R square. So although these numbers are not ideal, actually compare with our K and N regression results on the same data set and same ratio of the training validation and test set, our K and N results in a testing prediction that has an RMSE of $3,547. So this RMSE is still slightly smaller than the KNN regression RMSE. And the R square is still slightly better than the R square in the KNN regression because in the KNN regression, we actually have a negative R square. And that shows because R square is defined as proportion of the variance explained by the fit. So if the fit is actually worse than fitting a horizontal line, then the R square becomes negative, and we actually had a negative R square in the KNN regression. And in here, at least R square is positive. So our regression tree still performs better than the KNN regression. Now let's take a look at the actual tree and try to use it to run through a record. So this is our full tree. So it's similar to classification tree. We have decision node and we have terminal node. And so each decision node is coordinated into a, a selected input variable. Each decision node, you have a value inside of it that you will compare with the record. If it's less than this value, you go to the left. If it's more than the value, you go to the right. For example, if the age less than 52.5, that has a college degree, like right college degree greater than 0.5, that means it has a college degree, and then the age is actually greater than 47.5, then this model predicts that the average balance will be $591. So that means that people with age between 47.5 and 52.5 that has college degree, their average average balance is $591. So that's how you read when you have a full tree. You have most of the selected variables. You don't see the high school degree, you see college instead. You don't see the marriage, uh, you see divorced instead. You see both entrepreneur and unemployed, and you see a lot of the age put into factor. So this is our full tree. And then we have our best prune tree. So our bias prune tree will be having the most significant features and which is age and then college and divorced. So these three are the most significant features left in a prune tree. So it's a much simpler model. Let's find the first record in our test set. Let me give you a filter and filter only the test set. So our first record in the test set has a average balance of $9,444, 36 years old, is not divorced, and does not have a college education. So those are the three variables used in the best prune tree. Now let's take a look at the tree. So age is 36 years old, so starting from the top decision node, and that's less than 52. 0.5, so you go left and next we evaluate the college and so it does not has a college degree and so we go left and then we take a look at the age again 36 is greater than 34.5 then we go right and the voice is zero so we go left so then our predicted average balance for this record would be $701.57. And so we can see that that's some difference between the actual number and the predicted number. So that would be our regression error. It would be about 8,700 ish difference. So the next record would be 40 years old, so still going to the left. And college is a zero, still going to the left, and the age is 40, so you'll go to the right, and divorce is zero, you go to the left, it's still the same. But 
you can see that 701, the difference between 701 and 338, the difference is much less than the previous record. It's only about 370. So this is how we use the regression tree to predict continuous numeric value.